Hey, this is Mr. Wistar, and this is a lesson on how to use the Q data structure in Java. Um, it's a little bit uh, like our lesson in using stacks, and I think you'll see that there's a lot of similarities between the two data structures. So just like with that stack lesson, we're going to talk about what, uh, what makes a Q a Q, and then we're going to contrast it with um, stacks, both in terms of how it works and also how the basic operations um, are set up for queues in comparison with stacks. And then we'll talk about, just like with stacks, we will talk about how to create queue objects using the standard classes that are built into the Java library. Okay, so let's talk about what a queue is. Um, just like with a stack and an array and a linked list, it's a linear data structure. Remember that means that each node is connected to, at most, one node that comes before it and one node that comes after it. They're connected to each other in a chain. Um, what makes a queue a queue, remember when we, talked to, when we talked about stacks, we said that with a stack you could only add and remove from one end of the data structure. Well, with a queue, you have similar restrictions, but this time we're going to work with both ends. So in a queue, you can only add things to one end of the queue, which we call the back, and then you can only remove things from the other end, which we call the front. So um, things get put in the back of a queue and they come out the front. And in case uh, some of you may already be familiar with the term queue, um, like let's form a queue, or even as a verb you can say let's queue up. And what that typically means is let's form a line. And that's the best way to think about a queue, it's like a line. And so actually compared to stacks there's a lot more um, obvious real-world applications of queues in your programs. And so we've talked about a couple of them here. Uh, if you're taking numbers at the deli counter, or if you're keeping track of cars at the toll booth, or even a more computer-specific example, if you're trying to write a program that can do multitasking, a lot of times that is run through a queue, where every program that's running on your computer essentially gets in line. And then whoever's at the front of the line comes off, gets to use your microprocessor for a little while, and then when it's finished, it has to stop and let go, and then it goes to the back of the line. So that is, those are some examples of what you might want to use a queue for in your programs. As far as how the queue is organized, we've talked about how there's two ends to a queue, and what that results in is a policy for accessing data which we call first in first out or FIFO. Remember that's the opposite of stacks which are LIFO. Um, FIFO means that the first item that goes into the queue is the first item that comes out and we can also refer to that with its um, kind of sister acronym which is LISH, which stands for last in, still here. The last thing we put in um, is going to be still in the queue uh, because everything else has to come out first. So FIFO goes with LISH and LIFO goes with FISH. You can say it to yourself, it's kind of a fun little jingle. Um, FIFO LISH, LIFO FISH. LIFO is for stacks, FIFO is for queues. The upshot of all that, if you think about it, remember when we were working with stacks we said that Sometimes one of the problems with stacks is that you can put something in a stack and it can get stuck at the bottom of the stack forever. Well, that can't happen with queues because um, nothing that you put in can come out until everything else that's already been put in has come out first. And so if you do a little side-by-side -side comparison, the average wait time uh, between uh, stacks and queues, the average wait time for an element in a queue is way less. As far as the basic queue operations that you're going to need to learn how to use, just like with stacks, we've got three operations that are sort of fundamental to the queue, and, but they have different names. Instead of pushing an item onto a stack, we're going to call the add method um, to add it to our queue. And instead of popping it off of a stack, we're going to call the remove method. And lastly, there's a method that we used with stacks called peak, which allowed us to just take a look at what was at the top of our stack without removing it. In the case of a queue, if you want to see what's at the front of your queue without removing it, there's a method you're going to call um, named element. 
All right, let's talk about the actual syntax for creating queue objects because it's a little bit different. You have to understand what you're getting yourself into. With stacks, we actually had a class called stack that we could create objects out of, um, just like we would create array list or link list or something like that. Queues are a little bit different. Um, there is no queue class in Java, but what there is is there's an interface called queue. Uh, we haven't talked a lot about interfaces in Java in this course, but uh, you've seen interfaces, and what you need to know about an interface is that if your class implements an interface, then it's signing up for a list of methods that it is going to be required to implement in order to be used um, as an object of that interface. And the methods for the queue interface that you have to make sure that you implement for the most part, are these ones that we talked about. So in order for a class to be considered a queue, it has to implement add, remove, an element, plus some other ones that we're not really going to need to get into right now. So which classes in Java actually implement the queue interface? Well, a lot of them do. If you look in the API, you can see a whole list, and it's a pretty long one. Uh, but the one that I want to call your attention to is the link list class turns out that the linked list class implements the queue interface. And if you think about what we know about linked list, it makes sense, right? What are all the methods that we've implemented with our linked list? Well, they all involve either working with the first item in the, in the linked list or the last item in the linked list. And that's exactly the same as working with a queue, where the only operations that you're going to run are those that work with the front of the queue or the back of the queue. So you can create a link list object, and then you can call add, remove, an element, and they're going to work just fine. So let's take a look at how that works in the syntax. If we jump into JGrasp, um, here's the test program that we wrote last time. So why don't we change it a little bit so that instead of being a stack test, it's going to be a queue test. So I'm going to save as so that it renames my program. And let's go through and make the changes that we need to. So we need to import the queue interface. We also have to import the link list class. And now let's look at the syntax for creating a queue. Okay. So queue string test gets new link list string. You're probably looking at that line and saying that doesn't make any sense. How can I use one class on the left hand side of the assignment operator? and a different class on the right hand side of the assignment operator. Well, that's sort of one of the main purposes of using an interface. The way you should read that line of code is that I'm creating a queue, a pointer to a queue named test, and it just so happens that the type of that queue is a link list. We could have created a new object of any class that implements queue. In this case we're going to use linked list. Alright, what else do I have to change? Well remember back to that slide that we looked at where we sort of saw that one-to-one -one, um, translation of stack operations into queue operations. So let's go find push. Instead of push we're going to call add. And instead of pop we're going to call remove. Now as far as empty goes turns out there's no operation that's exactly the same as empty. But what we are going to use is we are going to use in the linked list class um, we are going to check to see if the uh, linked list contains any items. Um, and we're going to look for the method that does that by taking a look in the API. So if we look at the API and we study the implementation for the queue interface, here it is. It's an interface, so it's in italics. Let's take a look at what our options are. So. What we're going to use in the case of our queue, um, because queue comes from a 
Another interface that we're also sort of familiar with called collection is if you look in the list of methods that we get from collection, we're going to use this method called isEmpty. isEmpty is a Boolean um, which essentially does the same thing as the stack method that we were using in our program. So if we go back here, we're going to say while well, test is empty equals false, string out gets test out remove. So let's compile our program. Here we go. Let's see what happens. Now again, just like with our stack le uh, lesson, let's think about what output we should expect to see when we run our program. Okay, you got it? Let's run our program. Notice that we get our letters out in the same order that we put them in. Remember, FIFO. First in, first out. The A went in first, the A comes out first. And so with a Q, you always get the items out in the same order that in the same order that you put them in. With a stack, of course, you always get your items out in the opposite order that you put them in. Okay, so in this lesson, um, we really kind of extended our understanding of stacks into a similar but different kind of data structure called a queue. A queue is different because you put things in at the back end and you remove them from the front. We looked at what the basic queue operations are and how they compare with stacks. And then we looked at how to implement queues or how to use the link list class to create a queue object for the programs that you need to use. All right, you're all set.